Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome out to tonight's uh, live training webinar. Uh, this is Shade for A. Of course, I'm here with uh, with Steven Swenson, and uh, these are uh, yeah free webinars that we've been doing here for a while. We do them every uh, every six weeks or so, and uh, and yeah, we enjoy it. It's a chance for us to uh, to uh, do webinars for people that are not necessarily members and some members. You know, we we get everybody coming along. Yeah, it's great to have you guys, and, and we think we have uh, some important information to go over tonight, a lot of uh, good topics and, and good things to cover. So we're excited that you're here, uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and get going on with the training. Yeah, so, um, you know, we want to, uh, really, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the I guess, tax sale investing and kind of an overview of the process, and then also we're going to be talking about uh, you know, county records and some of the things that we uh, that we look for. And if we have time, hopefully we can go and, um, and you know, show and I guess demonstrate what we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, to kind of begin, some of you guys may know about us. Some of you guys may be kind of brand new to us. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but uh, me and Shade are cousins. We grew up together. We both had an interest in real estate. And in the late 90s, uh, we had a chance to attend a tax sale got us interested and and you know over the next years we ended up creating a program that, and for many years we worked with seminar companies yeah starting uh, from about 2007 uh, you know we started working with seminar companies and um, private labeled our materials for them um, which we taught a lot of people but eventually wanted to get away from uh, from the seminar industry <clears throat> that was uh, right around 2016 when we decided to start uh, tax sell support you know which um, you know the membership program and just bring the training uh, you know to directly to the public rather than working through through seminar companies and um, and really since then it's been great we've been able to uh, to work with a lot more people and um, and have control over things like you know like the products that we pr produce and the prices yeah yeah what we kind of did is we took the home study program that they were selling with inspect in books and CDs for thousands of dollars and just put it as a mold, uh, a low monthly fee on our website. Yeah, no, it was really the start of the membership program. So, anyhow, with um, with that out of the way, um, let's get into the uh, the topic here for tonight. We're going to go through kind of a quick, you know, overview of the process. If we have people that are new, um, and uh, and if people that aren't new, you know, we're also going to get a chance to kind of dive into county records, um, you know, and so. Uh, it should be a little bit of something for everybody. Yeah, we really wanted to give uh, you guys some meat, and that's the reason we want to get into county records tonight. But to kind of overview, there's three different tax sale systems. There's tax liens, tax deeds, and what we call redemption deeds. Yeah, really, these are all enforcement systems for property taxes. And exactly how this enforcement system works um, is going to come down to how the state laws are written in each individual state. Um, but if we break those down, we basically have three systems. Yeah, definitely. So as far as tax lien certificates, tax liens are placed against uh, delinquent property owners for not paying their property taxes. And essentially, these tax liens are then sold to investors on a yearly basis. Yeah, I, there are a lot of states in the country that use liens, uh, probably more than 20. You know, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of states of them that, that use them. Um, you know, liens are fantastic investments because they have incredible power. Uh, that lien is utilizing the whole property, you know, as collateral for, you know, for the amount that's owed, which is usually a, you know, a tiny percentage of what the, you know, what the value of the property actually is. So they have a tremendous amount of security that way, and they pay out, um, you know, a good rate of return based on how long, you know, they are delinquent. So it's like anything else, the longer it takes that property owner to pay off their tax bill, the more they're going to have to pay in penalties and fees. Yeah, now these tax liens, they have foreclosure rights. Most of the time, uh, you're going to get paid back your interest, your penalties, your fees. You're just going to get paid back. But if not, you have the chance to foreclose on that property and essentially become the new property's owner for just the back taxes. Yeah, really, um, every lien has a redemption period. You know, and that is like a grace period that the property owner has before they can lose their property, you know, to foreclosure. And as the lien holder, that's all you're really waiting for before you can act and try to foreclose on the property is for that redemption period to expire. But once that happens, you can use that lien to initiate foreclosure. And, you know, again, whenever somebody's faced with foreclosure, they either have to pay off, you know, the amount owed or they lose the property. And, uh, and if they lose the property, that property, uh, you know, can become the owner of, can become owned by the lien holder. Yeah, definitely. 
Now, as far as tax lien examples, here are some tax lien certificates that were picked up by, by some of our uh, members or coaching students. Uh, these were actually over the counter tax liens that they were able to pick up after the sale. And you can see that, you know, these aren't necessarily the, the most sexy homes in the world, but each one of them has value. And the lien is, is fairly small compared to the property value. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the lien is pretty small, but in every case, though, the property has tremendous value, uh, especially compared to the lien amount. And, uh, you know, you're going to earn a, a good, you know, interest rate return on these investments. And if by chance <clears throat> that the redemption period, you know, expires on these, then you can foreclose on, on it, you know, for basically the cost of three or four years worth of delinquent taxes and fees. Yeah, each one of these are earning 14%, so chances are you're going to make your 14%, but if not, you would have the chance to foreclose on these. And and if in purchasing these kind of over-the-counter tax liens, it's it's conceivable if you were to purchase, you know, 10 of these, you might be able to get a property. Yeah, yeah, and that's about probably how the numbers work. Most of the time, people are going to pay off their delinquent taxes and not lose, you know, the property to foreclosure. So 95% of the time, you know, liens end up resulting in redemption. Uh, but if they don't, you know, that 5% of the time when they don't, you know, the uh, the lien holder, uh, you know, can foreclose on the properties to become the new uh, the new property owner. Yeah. Now, as far as tax deeds, what tax deed states do is is every state will have a redemption period or a time frame that they allow property owners to be delinquent. Usually it's between three to five years. Now, once that period is passed, then in tax deed states, the county just go ahead and foreclose on that property and they offer it up at a tax deed auction. Yeah, that's really one of the big differences is that it's the counties that are foreclosing on properties in uh, in, in tax deed states, um, you know, because they're basically just waiting out property owners uh, create your know, redemption period and when that comes to an end then they have the right to foreclose on the property uh, and offer it up for auction you know in order to recover the delinquent taxes that are owed so it's going to start you know usually the bidding is going to start at the combined total for delinquent taxes we're talking about three years or four years worth of taxes and fees uh, you know is the opening bid amount which a lot of times that's only you know, uh, five to 15% of the property's value. Yeah, well, if you're looking to acquire real estate, it's really gonna be through tax deed foreclosures. Uh, you know, that's really where our students that are interested in acquiring property, that's where we'll point them in that direction. You know, in fact, here are some examples of tax deed properties that sold within the last 30 days or so through, through online auctions, in fact. Yeah, and uh, in each of these cases, we have properties that, uh, turned out to be pretty good purchases, you know, for the uh, for the buyers. So starting here on the left, we have a, a building lot. You know, it's just a, a piece of vacant land, but it's accessible. Uh, and it, the actually the lot right next to it was available as well for the same price. So you basically could have doubled up the lots, um, you know, for about you know that price, you know, uh, and you know, for roughly 4,000 and had, you know, probably been into it for 10% of what it was worth at least. Yeah, definitely. You know, picked up at 2,800, had a market value of over 30,000. Uh, the property in the home is actually kind of a vacation mobile home with its own piece of land uh, that ended up selling up in, in Washington for 33,000, has a market value of around 90 grand. Uh, so they paid a little bit more for it, but there's still a lot of potential profit market value between 90 to 100. Uh, there's still 60, 60, 70 thousand dollars worth of potential profit in that deal. Yeah, well, and they only really paid, you know, 35 uh, percent, maybe. Yeah. You know, a, a pretty low percentage. Well, we're also value. talking about a newer, a newer mobile home. I mean, you know, this was mobile homes, you know, within the last 10 or 15 years. Yeah, yeah, and then the uh, the house on the right, you know, we have a house that. Uh, you know, is still in usable condition. It maybe has a few things that are a little bit rough on it, you know, uh, maybe the stairs up front, but uh, only sold for 21,000 and, you know, it has a market value of, of you know, 106. So, uh, you know, there's room there for, you know, for rehab and, you know, room for profitability. Yeah, also the rentals within that area are quite high. So I think, you know, 1,500 to $2,000 a month. So if you're looking at that to that, that twenty thousand dollars that you ended up buying even if you put in an extra ten or twenty thousand dollars to rehab the property yeah it's still profitable yeah it's going to pay for itself within within three or four years of, of just that rental income coming in yeah these are all 
tax deed properties. Again, these ones are all properties that sold in the last uh, in the last two weeks. Yeah. Wow. You know, they're good examples of, of tax deeds. Now, uh, there is a third system here, redemption deeds that are used in a handful of states. Um, you know, these are kind of a hybrid between tax liens and tax deeds. They're essentially tax deeds that are sold with a redemption period attached to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, as far as redemption deeds, uh, they usually have a shorter redemption period. Usually it's between six months to a year except for in the case of Texas for, for homestead properties, they give a two-year redemption period. Um, but the one thing about redemption deeds is instead of paying an interest rate return like you would uh, on a tax lien, they're actually going to pay you a penalty rate. So if I was to go ahead and buy a, a redemption deed in Texas on, on, you know, on uh, Tuesday, uh, and they came in and repaid that the very next day, then, then you would still get your full 25% return uh, versus where a taxing certificate, you're just earning a an interest rate return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing with penalties, I guess, is you do get that flat rate of return. You know, it's not it's not conditional upon how long that time period has been. But essentially, though, the trade off for that is that well, you know after you buy the property, you don't have the ability to sell it immediately. You know, you have to wait out that redemption period before you have the power to sell the property. So, uh, you know, it it uh, you know it forces the investment to be longer, you know, a little bit, maybe than what you might normally do. You know, you have to wait out a redemption period of six months or, um, you know, you know, in the case of Texas, most of the properties are going to be six months. You know, it's only homestead properties and farmland that get the full two years. So, you know, most of the time with, uh, with Texas properties, you're going to be looking at a six-month redemption period, which means you know if you buy something, you're going to have to wait out that six-month time period before you can list it and begin actively, you know, selling the property. Yeah. Now, um, you know, one other thing about redemption deeds is we really approach redemption deeds just like we would a tax deed, meaning we're going to do a higher level of due diligence. Also, the redemption deeds are going to bid up in price like like a tax deed. Yeah, yeah, you're basically bidding for the property just like you would with deeds. Yeah, so when we do our research with a redemption deed, we're going to do the same type of research uh, as if we're buying a tax deed property, as if we'll own the property. And also, you're going to have a lot higher chance of owning the property, where tax liens, maybe you have a 5% chance. You know, redemption deeds, you could have a 50-50% uh, shot, sometimes even higher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of money that the person's going to have to come up with, you know, at, at once to pay off that bill. Uh, and, you know, again, the chances of them doing it, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But yeah, like you said, it's a lot higher chance that you're going to end up getting the property than it is with a lien where it's almost guaranteed that you're not. You know, uh, it's definitely different with uh, with redemption deeds where there's a high percentage, you know, chance that you'll end up getting it. So you've got to pick the properties out based on, you know, the idea that you're buying the properties. Yeah, and these are just some examples of, of you know, uh, properties coming up for auction in the state of Texas uh, where you have that opening bid amount. That's going to be the amount of the back taxes. And essentially, it's going to bid up from there. So, you know, it could start at $5,000 and end up, you know, finishing at $20,000 or $50,000, kind of depending on the property value and the competition there to sell. Yeah, either way, if it redeems, you know, you're going to earn a percentage of, you know, of what you've paid for. It. Yeah. You know, so it works out well for you. Now, uh, we've seen something kind of interesting happen over the last two years, um, you know, or ever since the pandemic. When did it really start here? Was it more than a year ago, a year and a half? A couple of years. Yeah. Well, really, we kind of thought 2021 uh, was going to be a big year because the year before that, you know, uh, counties had started postponing their auctions. But what ended up happening is there's a bunch of states, a bunch of counties that ended up postponing their sales in 2021. And they're all scheduled and plan on doing sales in 2022. So we really think that 2022 is gonna be a great uh, year for tax sale investing because there's gonna be a lot more property coming uh, coming up for sale because those properties have been held back in, in, in these many states and counties. Yeah, well, and a lot of the places are now set up so that they can conduct their sales you know, regardless of what's happening. You know, I, I think that for a lot of places, uh, they, 
you know, they, they found the, you know, the trying to conduct their sale as usual was a problem, you know, as soon as this pandemic came up. So, uh, you know, they've, they've put in efforts to do online auctions and, uh, and do more things like this. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to see more online auctions as well. Yeah. There's been a backlog of properties, um, that, you know, that we see coming up for auctions. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be offered here over the next 12 months. You know, there should be an increase in the number of opportunities that are available. Yeah. So, so let's get into county records. Uh, how do we research them? Really, county records are one of the most important things uh, that we use as tax sale investors. We're going to use them to research the history, the maps. That's really where we're going to find 80% uh, of the information that we're going to use to judge the property. Yeah, we're usually starting off with a with a tax sale list, uh, and you know when we're looking at, I guess there's a lot of things here that we are looking for with uh, with property records and with the tax sale list, uh, but a lot of the information that we're looking for is stuff that's going to help us identify exactly where the property is located, things like the mapping of the property, so uh, we can determine if it's accessible, uh, you know, and if it's you know if it's usable, if it's something like a single family home. You know, then we're looking to uh, for an address so that we can figure out things like you know like property valuations and value. You know, but the stuff we're going to start off with though is always the information to try to identify where it's at and what it is. Yeah, well, and where we're going to get that information is going to be through the tax sale list. Now, if it's an online auction, a lot of times they're going to make that easy because they may connect the the county records directly to the online auction. But if we're looking at an over-the-counter list or, or a live auction list, a PDF Excel list, then really what we're going to have to use is use that parcel number or any of that other information that's available on the list, whether that be the uh, property owner's name, uh, the uh, street address, any of that other information to find the property. But the most common thing we're going to use is going to be use the parcel number to look up the property information. Now we are going to use that owner's name to look up um, some additional things when we're looking up for governmental liens and things, but we're going to take that information off the tax sale list and use it to help us find the county record information. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when we're dealing with uh, with county records, that uh, really there are uh, four different kinds of county records that that we deal with. Um, there are you know, treasurer, assessor, county maps, you know, and the recorder's office. Um, and each one of them plays a role. You know, the treasurer records are primarily important with tax lien investing. For deed investing, um, they can help us determine things like the assessed value, um, but the actual past due taxes is usually, uh, you know, rolled up into the opening bid amount. And so usually we're taking care of past due taxes with deeds with the opening bid amount. But if there's liens, then the treasurer's records are really important because we need to know about other liens that might exist and that's the only place we can really find out. Yeah, the treasurer records are also going to be important because there's many counties uh, and states that will use the the county treasurer or the tax collector to actually conduct the tax sale. So this may be where we're going to actually find the tax sale list as well, even in the case of a deed, and then we'll, then we'll be taking that information and go researching in the assessor record. But like Shade said, this is really going to be important for tax lien investing because one thing we want to do before ever buying a tax lien is determine if there's any other liens on the property. We want to know, are we, we have the, do we have the first position lien or is there a lien ahead of us? And what is the total amount of back tax liens that could be on the property? Yeah, yeah, and that's because, uh, you know, we've talked about how liens have the power to foreclose on, on properties and that's true. Uh, you know, they can foreclose on properties, but... If there's other liens against the property, then they're going to have to be paid off. They can't just get wiped out by another lien. So it means we have to pay off all the liens in order to foreclose on a property. So that's why county records, um, you know, the, the the treasurer's records specifically with the tax history are important for us because they will tell us uh, exactly what's happened in the past you know, with other taxes besides, you know, this tax lien you're looking at right now. Yeah, definitely. And so we can go in and look up the tax owner record. Sometimes they'll have links directly to the assessor's record from there as well. We can also look up the tax history and see each year that's been paid, how much was paid, what hasn't been paid. And, and that way we can determine, you know, which years are delinquent or which years may have additional liens, especially for uh, researching, particularly for the roll up. Yeah. So um, again, 
you know, we use the treasurer a lot with the tax lien sales. If we're dealing with uh, tax deed sales, then we end up, you know, spending a lot of time first with the, the assessor's office uh, because this is usually where we're going to find the property assessments. You know, the county records that we're looking for in the property assessment is going to tell us quite a bit uh, about how the property is valued and what it consists of. Yeah, in fact, we're even going to use the assessor records even in researching tax lien certificates as well. Yeah, you know, to see what the property what the property is. Now, a lot of times we can use search engines to find uh, you know, these assessor records. A lot of times if you just type in the county name, assessor records, uh, assessor website, it's going to be able to pull up the, the a link that can direct you uh, to a page where you can start researching these records. Yeah, in fact, yeah, what we're looking for within the assessor's office uh, are, you know, their parcel search tools, you know, or basically their access to their, you know, their record inventory, you know, and the way they usually do that is through a parcel search tool. But there's a lot of stuff that we can grab from county assessors, um, everything from assessed values, property addresses, locations, um, zoning and use, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, we use sales history, you know, all, all the time. I mean, uh, uh, really, this is also ends up being kind of the hub where we access other information as well as from the, the assessor's record. Yeah, in fact, uh, we're going to use even something like the ownership ownership information and the owner's name later on when we're trying to research uh, any type of governmental liens that could be against the property. And so the assessor's records really is what we're going to use to determine uh, most tax lien investments. After going through the assessor's records, we can usually make a decision on a tax lien certificate. Now, if we are investing a tax deed, we're going to have to do more investing than just the assessor's records to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. So here we've got um, a great example. So Florida is kind of like the uh, the the state, you know, with counties that have figured out how to do a lot of things great, you know, like for instance, you know, the the, uh, the county records for a lot of the Florida counties are better than I think almost any other state out there. You know, this is a good example of, of some great, uh, you know, great assessment record that's pretty easy to get through and it has all the information laid out in an easy to digest format. Yeah, in fact, we can see uh, underneath the owner's name on the, on the left hand side, below that we also have the sales information. And, and connected to that sales information, a lot of counties will have a live link underneath the book and page number that will take you directly to the tax, to the deed itself. So if we're looking and we wanna find deed information, which is something we'll do if we're doing a full due diligence research on a property, then we can access it you know, that quickly. And like Shade had mentioned earlier, there's gonna be a lot of additional links and information on the county records that could take us to additional information that's important. Yeah, like for instance, this particular property is a condo. You know, we can see here, you know, that, um, you know, we can see that it's located here within, you know, this uh, this condominium, you know, uh, complex here. And so one of the things, you know, that we could oftentimes need if we're looking at condos is to figure out the square footage of this particular condo. Uh, because, you know, and how many bedrooms and baths, you know, it's something that can vary sometimes between condos. and so. Uh, you know, nice we have here always if there's improvements in the property, then there's going to be a breakdown of the improvements or, uh, you know, information about the improvements. And so here, you know, if we look, this is where we're always going to find stuff like that. So we have, you know, the, the, this condo was built in 1972 and, oh, oh dang it, I clicked on it. Uh, built in 1972, we can see it has an area of 1,092 square feet. Um, and so we know, you know, that it's... Uh, basically 1100 square feet or just under uh, when we're going to look for comps because that's going to be a factor some of these other condos might be bigger yeah know? in fact we can see underneath there as well underneath right below that underneath the appraisal value we can see the improvement value there uh, with the total market value now because it is a condo it's not going to have any land value now if this was a single family home we would see both improvement value and land value there but that's at least going to give us an idea of how much this property is valued at. Especially if we're looking at something like land, that's going to be one of our first indication along with looking at the size and the map of the property to determine if it's a property we're going to be interested in. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, you know, uh, we also see it's a two-bedroom, two-bath. here. Now, uh, the next thing we use are the county maps, you know, and you know, maps are something that have really come a long way and they are, you know, it's only 
growing. I think more and more counties have, are getting good GIS systems, um, you know, which are just map tools that we can basically use, uh, you know, to find properties. And it's really one of the tools that we pull up on almost every single property because it's, you know, how we know where the boundaries are and, you know, how the property is oriented. Yeah, these are going to be incredibly helpful, uh, especially in researching land properties. I mean, they're going to be helpful in researching any type of property. But with something like a piece of land that may not have an address, but it's just located on a street. Yeah, it's the only way we can find yeah, it. Yeah, it really helps us be able to, to hone in where those properties are located so that we know exactly where they are. Um, but we use it for all kinds of different things. Yeah. Um, so some of the main things that we're trying to figure out when we're looking at uh, at, at the mapping from an overhead image like this, like satellite imagery, uh, or from you know planes, I think they get it probably from uh, from airplanes here. But uh, we're looking for accessibility from public roads. So want to make sure that you know that it's not landlocked, uh, which is something you know that is always got to be consideration when you're looking at properties. Um, but we're also looking at the size of the property uh, and uh, you know what its you know what its uses are. Yeah. You know, whether it's got improvements. Well, and we can also tell kind of where the property is located. Is it located in a neighborhood? Is it located in more commercial area? Is it, uh, you know, on, on the border of either one of those? Uh, they also could be really helpful in researching things like potential risk, uh, something like uh, a drainage basin or uh, uh, some type of government utility or utility something, you, you know, utility easement on a property. Those can be avoided by using something like a uh, an online map. Yeah, and if we're looking at a piece of you know uh, vacant land, then we may need to use a map like this to figure out cross streets so that we can try to locate the property on other maps. Yeah, you know if we don't have a precise address, you know then then this is how we're going to have to try to figure out where it's at. In fact, if if we're using these maps, a lot of times we'll actually pull up Google Maps as well, and and see if we can get some type of street view along with the overhead uh you know the overhead view to get a better idea about the property yeah so that we can try to determine an exact address that will take us to that spot you know, yeah. you know if, if we can but um you know there are some different kinds of maps that we're going to use here and uh and uh, we've got gis maps which are uh, very handy you know they also have a, a lot of different layers and things lots of information that we can access from uh you know from this map it can tell us additional information so uh, but also, you know, we, we usually have to pull up things like the base maps to see imagery at all. So that's something to always check here with the maps is, is in order to see imagery, you're almost always going to have to click on either a different base map to choose it, or you're going to have to go into the layers. If the map doesn't have, you know, base maps in it, then, then the imagery is going to be in the layers. Yeah, th those are usually going to be the two places that you're going to find it. And in addition to those base maps, there could be all kinds of additional maps on there that could be incredibly helpful. Uh, something like a, a topographical map. Uh, if we're looking at a piece of land and we're trying to determine is this, you know, is what is the, is this on a hill? Yeah, you know? yeah, what's the elevation change? Yeah, across you know, there? that's going to really be able to help us, especially if we can't get something like a, a, a street view of the property then that's going to at least help let us know, hey, this is flat, this is on a hill, and at least give us an idea without actually going there and looking at the property in person. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, GIS maps are what's fairly new. What they are replacing are the old plat maps. You know, which plat maps um, are, uh, if GIS maps aren't available, then plat maps usually are. You know, but they, but they, we may just be looking at a PDF. Uh, you know, copy of it, kind of like this. You know, where you might need to uh, to try to figure out where exactly it's located at using the legal description, or you know, you, if they don't have a map at all, you can you may even have to contact the county to find out if they have something like this they can send you. Yeah, you know, even if they only do have plat maps, that doesn't mean you can't find the property. You know, I mean, 20 years ago, that's what we all had to use. To, to pull up property. They didn't have these type of online maps. Well, and extra steps like that almost make it, um, you know, so many you know, potential investors end up dropping out because there's this additional step of not being able to see the property easily. And so there can be some good opportunities because of that. Yeah, most of the plat maps are gonna have street names, you know, things like that that you can use to kind of hone in and find out where this property is located. So if we are looking at a plat map, we can use look at that plat map along with something like Google Maps 
and really find out where the property location is, even if it doesn't have an address. Yeah, yeah. In fact, yeah, it, it, you do a lot of things today that just weren't possible uh, a few years back. Now, uh, the county, uh, you know, gets the recorder's office uh, or their records, the recorder's records. It's kind of a funny wording. You know, recorders though, basically that's what they do. They record all this information, and they're the ones that are going to have information uh, like. Uh, title information related to the property and if liens have been issued against properties. And so uh, you know, this is where we're going to go to try to find out about a potential risk that, that a potential risk that exists if you're buying uh, properties outright. You know, so if you're buying tax deed properties, then one of the things you've got to be aware of is that uh, there are certain kinds of liens that can exist uh, you know, against the property that you could be liable for if you buy it. Yeah. Now, you know, usually it's going to be the recorder. It could be the clerk. Uh, it's going to be whoever's in charge of collecting the deeds, any mortgages, judgments, liens. That's going to be the person that we're going to want to contact or go to to find out about any governmental liens that may survive the, the tax foreclosure. Because uh, like Shade said, that's really the one thing that can survive. Yeah. So, um, you know, when we contact them, what exactly is it that we're looking for? Well. Um, in most cases, the the judicial foreclosure that properties go through, um, you know, when they're foreclosed on uh, due to taxes, it will usually wipe out most mortgages and judgments that are against the property. But they, it doesn't have the power in most cases to wipe out other government issued liens. You know, those liens are kind of on the same, uh, you know, they're on the same grounds or are equal to, you know, uh, that that foreclosure power. So they don't have the power just to wipe it out. Um, you know, that includes things like federal liens or something issued by the state or something that's issued by a county or a municipality. You know, so uh, any of these are issued by government entities. And so they're all kind of seen as being, you know, above just a basic judicial foreclosure. So uh, that's something we have to watch out for. Now, the most common types that we're going to come up against are types of nuisance liens or cleanup liens or grass cut liens you know they're um, you know, liens that are related to you know people not taking care of a property yeah. or having too much junk or something like that yeah definitely so as far as county records you know these county records are open to the public but that doesn't necessarily mean that, that the county uh needs to make these uh available online uh, you may need to in, in, to go there in person to be able to get a. Now, a lot of counties have added them online, but as we get into smaller or more rural counties, they may they may still have those just in paper form or in a form where you actually have to go down there in person. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I guess it's odd that they have it be public, but that doesn't mean that I mean, you know, it, having their doors open you know and people can come in and do record searches there in person you know is open to the public enough so um however more and more of these counties now have other records online you know and so uh, we can find this stuff online now uh, you know a lot of times you know um, and it's pretty easy to see or at least to, to look it up there you know so if we're looking into some of these for instance if we're looking for a recorder's office um, you know, a basic Google search will pull it up pretty quick. Yeah, exactly. You know, we just typed in this case, Polk County, Florida, clerk clerk records, because in Florida, it's actually the clerk, uh, the clerk of court who handles uh, them. They're the recorder for uh, for Florida counties. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we can see here, you know, under their public record searches, there's a couple of different kinds of records that we could potentially be looking at. You can see they have their court record search, which is for, you know, search civil cases, criminal cases, traffic tickets, uh, you know, view dockets. That's not really the kind of, of, you know, court records that we're interested in. Down below that, we can see, you know, view deeds, mortgages, you know, marriage license. And that is, you know, the uh, the area that we are, you know, that we're interested in. And you can also see right below that, we can see the tax deeds and list of lands available. Um, that's because in Florida, um, you know, in Florida is a weird state um, in that they are the only state that offers, well, I guess there's other states that do liens and deeds, but not exactly like Florida. Florida uses both a tax lien system and a tax deed system. Um, with their tax liens, 
those are offered up by the treasurer or the tax collector you know essentially like like steve was saying um earlier but then you know they they sell their tax liens with a two-year redemption period and at the end of that redemption period uh lien holders can foreclose on the properties or initiate foreclosure but what happens then is in florida um, it goes to the clerk of the court's office where they will schedule the property for an auction, you know, an online auction. And that's what we're looking at here is their tax deed list. So in Florida, uh, liens that are foreclosed on are offered up in their tax deed auctions and the proceeds are used to pay off the other lien holders. So in Florida, you've got a very low, low chance that you're going to end up with a property as a lien holder, most of the time it's going to redeem whether that's before it's offered up at auction or, or after. Yeah, so in, in the case of Florida, we're gonna search underneath the official records. We can see that that's where they keep the deeds, mortgages, and that's where they're going to record anything like a, a governmental lien. Yeah, so uh, we've got a basic search we can do here by name. And that's why it's important that we research the deed and and look at that owner information because we're going to use that owner's name when we're actually going to research for any of the governmental liens or anything that could be issued on the property so we're going to go ahead and use that name to to search for any records that are available in this case you could click on the different records we're just going to pull up everything associated with this person's name uh to see what pulls up yeah in fact we'll show you here and then uh we'll go do an example here of it with some pro with uh with the property here in just a minute um so here you know we're looking up uh the name of one of the properties we were looking at there at the time you know barbara reed uh you know is the name barbara h reed you know uh, is is the name that we had in there and uh, you know under that name you know it pulled up a few different uh a few different things but not very many only four records were pulled up yeah yeah, so in this case, we may go ahead and search it without the H, see if we're able to pull up any additional records. Uh, and if she's the sole owner since there's a warranty deed, well, then we can see at least there's nothing that's been connected to her, uh, you know, as far as governmental liens on this particular property. There's nothing been recorded within the, within the, within the county of some type of issue that we need to be worried about yes yeah, so we can be pretty sure you know that, that we don't have some kind of a problem like that with the property you know yeah. if we can't find anything like a lien but we're going to show you in just a second what it looks like when there are liens so what if they don't have an online records well the first thing we can do is we can contact the county uh, they may have an option where they can email or fax you uh, some records uh, if not we can always go down in person if, if we do live within that area if not the only real way to pull up those, to see if there's any type of governmental liens is to hire a professional and have something like a lien report done through a title company. Yeah, basically having a title search done, which I mean, we usually avoid title searches because uh, you know there is a fair amount of cost that goes into them. And it doesn't make sense to do title searches on something before you've you know, been able to acquire it. Uh, and so, uh, but if if we can't get any kind of access to uh, to records, then that may be the only way you can really find out about something like liens. And that's because somebody, even when you hire a company, uh, the reason why you may need to look locally is because you know if if there's no other way to get the records, then they'll actually go into you know the county and get them. Yeah. Now, as far as these online uh, title searches, we're not going to have them do a full title search. Uh, you know, that's going to cost a lot more money. Really what we're looking for is what's called a lien search or a lien report. Uh, and that's going to post any liens that are against the property. And that's really the only thing that we need to be worried about. Yeah, yeah. The rest of the title search stuff really isn't as relevant. It, it can be handy for us. We can use it as a tool when we're selling it. Uh, but uh, in terms of you know the information that we need with our due diligence, it's mostly the lien search. Yeah. So. Uh, here are just a few other things here, you know, that we're going to do before buying things like, uh, you know, we're going to uh, find comps so that we can determine the actual value of the property. You know, some good comps to go off of. Um, you know, we're also going to figure out what the holding costs are for a year. You know, yeah. that's something we're going to try to account for every time is, uh, you know, if it takes a year to sell a property, how much is it going to cost us to hang on to the property for a year? Yeah, and when Shade says holding costs, what we're talking about is property taxes, in the case of that that condo we were looking at, that could be an HOA fee. Yeah. Uh, any type of fee that we're going to have to be required to pay during uh, during the time that we're holding the property. 
We're also going to determine the property's condition. And if it's an on site, if it's some type of structure, meaning a home or commercial property, then we're going to need to do either conduct an on site evaluation ourselves or send somebody out there to get current photos of the property. Uh, we're never going to buy a property without, uh, without getting photos of it first. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to determine our high bid amount. Uh, we need to figure out based on what the property's value is and based off of, you know, based off the property's value, then we can determine how much we're willing to pay for that particular property. Yeah. So um, let's go through and kind of do the same process where we can show you, you know, what we're looking for when we're doing, uh, you know, due diligence on, on a property. So uh, we're going to start off here. I like to zoom this in just a little bit here. Uh, we're going to start off here. Go into the online auction section and the tax deeds, and you know we're actually going to go to to Lee County here. Okay, so uh, you know we're looking at the tax deeds. Uh, you know the online auction for uh, for for Lee County here and their tax deeds. If we look here in the auction calendar, we can see that. Um, they actually just held a sale a couple of days ago and you know where they started off with about 100 properties so let's click on that sometimes it's interesting to go through and look at you know some of the results um, and so we can see uh, that's actually another condo i think that sold um now here's something that's kind of interesting so we can see that there is <clears throat> Uh, this property here it had an opening bid of 94,000, and you know it has an assessed value of 173. Well, one of the things that tells us almost immediately is that it's probably a homestead property. Um, you know, just because uh, one of the requirements for homestead properties is they have to be listed for 50% of assessed value. Yeah, that's just in Florida. Yeah, just in Florida. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's one of the ways that we can kind of identify. You know, sometimes homestead properties. Uh, now, here in this case, what this means is that it didn't get a bid. You know, nobody bid on it at the ninety-four thousand, uh, and that's rare for a home. Yeah. You know, it's kind of weird. You know, you don't really see it. So we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to. Yeah, even with them needing to start at fifty percent of assessed value, a lot of times the property in Florida is going to be quite a bit higher than the assessed value, so it can make financial sense a lot of times. To purchase it even if it is higher yeah so we can see here it is a single family home uh, you know we can see here they do have their assessed value there of 173 and if we want we can pull it up this way too you know and maybe the reason people didn't buy it is because they did do an on-site evaluation and it's in terrible shape yeah 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 you maybe know? it's a total wreck you know that that could be a possibility here um, yeah. But it's also possible that there was nobody that signed up for that particular sale that that had ninety thousand or a hundred thousand dollars to invest into it. I think it's that one. What does Zillow say it's worth? Uh, let's see here. I should have copied this off of. And so they have it. So, yeah, this is actually interesting. They have it listed at 170,000 is their estimate. But one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting is I looked at this. And when I was looking at the value, if you look at this, you know, so. Uh, they're saying, you know, that it's worth 170,000. We can see here that it was valued. I mean, all of this time, all of over 2018, this is all over 220,000, $230,000 value here. It jumped up as high as 280,000 here, you know, at a, 288,000 at one point. And then it suddenly, you know, went through a, you know, kind of a crazy drop off here before, you know, they give the value back up to like 170 here. Huh. Yeah, kind of, kind of bizarre, right? 
the structure's gone or something. I don't know. Um, but you know, I, I thought it was kind of interesting property. So we, you know, let's, let's look into it. So we can see from the record here, the owner of record, they are tenants in common, uh, but they have the same last name though. So they're probably married, right? So uh, we can see though, the uh, the owner name here, Michael T. Shipman, right? So what we're gonna do is, you know, there's probably a place we could click on for it, but why don't we just do, Lee County, Florida, official records. Uh, we can click on that. And uh, now you can see they have the official records here. And you, can see, you can see underneath that one right below in number two, consists of liens, plats, certificates, titles, mortgages, list pendants, deeds, judgments. That's exactly what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically what we're looking here, uh, recording official records and you know, official records search here. Whoops. Click here to search official records and then we can go by name right here. Accept this, yes. Okay, now, uh, now we're gonna go shipman. Okay, so we're going to see, you know, if we can see anything under, you know, under this Michael T. Shipman, right? Usually we're going to be looking underneath the dock type or, you know, possibly, you know, you can look underneath the the uh, grantor as well, which may be a city or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting is I started going down, uh, you know, through this is that there were some, uh, there were some Michael, uh, you know, there were some Michaels that were listed, but I noticed that there were these, and right here they had it listed the way it's listed on the, on the property, with you know, with Michael T. You know, Shipman and Christina Shipman. Yeah. And then the other thing that I could that I started looking for here on the side it was you can see some of these where it says L18 Thomas Estates. Well, if we go back here, you know, one of the things we can see is that this is lot 18 in the Thomas Estates. Yeah. And so. All right, so uh, with you know, with that in mind, we know these ones right here that are you know talking about L18 are definitely you know uh, associated with the property. So let's click on the first one here, which is well, actually it's not even the first one. The one above it is probably the first one, um, or even actually above that. You know, that's satisfaction. That was different. All right, let's start here. I think it's the you know, well, we'd also look at those satisfactions as well because some of those times, if there could be a lien paid and then it was the satisfaction is actually getting paid. Now, that one we can see it's from Wells Fargo, mm -hmm. so it was some type of judgment. But if there was a can if it was a city name there, then we'd look at that satisfaction to see if it was if they had paid off the city lien. Yeah, so let's look at this one here. Um, and uh, let's see what this is here. We can first see it's from the city. Yeah, city of Bonita Springs, and it's uh, code enforcement order, you know, imposing fines and civil penalties for not paid. And uh, let's see. So they have like a $250 penalty here. $100 per day, goodness. Uh, okay, now if we go back here, let me go to the one right down below this because it's actually a little easier to read here, this one. Well, one thing I can see just by looking at them all is they're all from the city, mm -hmm. which means that we, if we were interested in purchasing this property before we buy it, uh, unless we determine, well, even if we determined that we could pay off all of it, we're going to contact the city, explain that we're interested in buying it, and see if they're able to work out some type of discount off of the total amount owed or uh you know a percentage of it or anything like that we're going to see if they're workable at all uh because sometimes you know there may be enough city liens that add up or they may have some type of penalty that makes it just totally not worth it to buy uh even if you were getting it for less than 90 grand yeah now one of the things that we can see here you know it's kind of interesting so every time the uh the city of bonita springs every time that they go out there to clean up the property i guess mow it and and clean it up they charge 
you know, they, they basically create a special assessment lien. So a, you know, they have a special lien for it every time where they charge $375, you know, which is going to earn interest at a rate of 12% annually, right? So uh, let's go back here. And so one of the things that, um, that we can see with this property that is kind of interesting is there are a whole bunch of liens placed against it. So uh, we can see, you know, this one right here doesn't have, uh, you know, let's see if it's the same, if it's against the same property. Lotmo, yeah, probably, yeah. Uh, $300 in this one, you know. Homes Estates, yeah, Lot 18, that's it. Okay, so uh, this one's a $300, you know, mowing lien. Uh, we've got these ones that we know are against it, you know, different kinds. So basically what, what it looks like is every three months or so, every three to four months, you know, they were going out and they've been, you know, mowing this property. And every time they do it, they slap a new special assessment lien for 300, and 300 or 375 now, it's up to. Uh, and uh let's see here so we've got you well know, each one of those liens counts you know is the time that they went out yeah so we've got uh one two three four five six seven eight and then hold on there's a second page here and look at that eight nine ten eleven twelve so the dates 13 14 yeah these are the newest ones yeah these are the newest ones right here um you know so these go from uh from september 22nd of 2020 there's uh, so, there's november then here we have into 2021 uh april and then in september oh that notice is probably the tax deed yeah that probably is let's see yeah because the tax deed yeah tax deed application so when a uh, when a tax lien holder in Florida, when that redemption period comes to an end, uh, then what they need to do with the county is uh, they need to uh, to uh, apply for a tax deed, and this is what you get here from that notice of a tax deed application. So it means that the lien holders foreclosing. Yeah, exactly. Well, we can see that they have from 2018 to 2021 liens against the property. So we would we definitely know that if we're going to buy this property, uh, we're going to figure out what that total is from the city. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to call the city and and find out from them, explain our situation and see if they're willing to work with it yeah, and find out what the total amount would be. If there's only one or two liens on the property, well, then paying, you know, 600, 800 bucks, a thousand bucks could totally be worth it in in the price and we'll just include that into the cost of buying the property yeah yeah now yeah this one uh this re most recent one is just another 300 let me see if this is the same thing because they were issued on the same day no these are different uh order of imposition they have not paid the 250 Wow, so now they're two hundred and fifty dollars per day is it's accruing at now. I mean, you know, you can't get out from underneath that. That's crazy. Let's see. Well, uh, you don't that's the reason you don't want to be stuck with it is a deal. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The one thing you wouldn't want to do though is you know buy something like this and not know about the fact that it has fourteen of these special assessment liens and each one of these things are at $1,500 now plus. Yeah, well, and say the total amount comes out to 10 grand and, you know, at that point you can make a decision if this property is worth 200 grand and you're paying, you know, uh, 80 grand for it, then maybe it's worth it to pay the 10 grand, but it's at least then you'll know what you need to and you can also see if they're willing to work out a, a discount on it. Yeah, but you would definitely want to to talk to uh, to the official records department there to find out exactly what the total amount is for all the liens because um, you know it's probably a significant amount. You know, it's not one of those things you would want to not know about. It's got to be at least ten thousand. Yeah. So because it seems like you know it's they've been getting 
Well, and he, and he, the you know the unfortunate thing for whoever that lien holder was that did the deed application. Yeah, they probably didn't look that they're, into it. They're going to get stuck with all of these, and hopefully they can work something out. Hopefully the property is sal you know salvageable. There's some real red flags, and that's probably why it wasn't purchased. It's just some of the red flags that we're seeing as we're looking into the deed history. There's all these liens, which probably tells me that this property hasn't been taken care of since 2018. Yeah. Well, you know, if they're sending somebody out there, that means the yard's got to be in pretty rough shape. Yeah. Yeah, we can see here, you know, it doesn't have very many uh, you know, transactions. You know, it looks like it sold for 110,000 in 2006. And you can see underneath the sales and transaction underneath the the uh, where it says uh, it's an OR number. Uh, you know, that a lot of be, times be the place you can click on to pull up the actual deed itself. Yeah, so we can see it had a warranty deed the last time, you know, it was sold. Mm -hmm. You know, which we can see here. So that's good for us to know. Um, it means, you know, that aside from looking up, you know, the stuff here for uh, for, you know, Michael T. Shipman, you know, we wouldn't need to look for anybody else, you know, but we found plenty of liens under, you know, under yeah. Michael. We found them all. So, uh, yeah, you know, lots of, lots of, of liens there. And that's that. really what it looks like. The only issue on this property is, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be those, those governmental liens, those judgments, Capital One, Citibank, any of that. Even if it's a mortgage, that's going to get wiped out through the judicial foreclosure. Yeah. What's not going to be is all those governmental liens. And that's why it's so important as investors that we research this before making an investment, especially if we're, you know, spending any significant amount of money. Uh, you know, if you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars, like in this case, you're going to want to make sure that you know everything about the property. And if there is governmental liens, that doesn't always mean it's a bad deal. You know, maybe it ends up being a couple thousand dollars and it's worth paying them off uh, to, to, to buy the property and do the deal. And we'll just include that within, within um, our total cost. Yeah. All right, looking up one more property. Yeah, uh, let's see here. Let's go back. And go into next month and let's look at a property coming up. They have an auction next month. Yes, they do. Yeah, they actually have some interesting properties here that are uh, that are coming up. You know, and they're still on the sale. Let's look at the number two down there. Yeah, it. it uh, in fact, I was looking at this is a commercial property here. Well, it's probably going to be a company name then. Yeah, Petro of South Florida Inc. And if we look at where it's located at. And there we can kind of see the overhead of it. Yeah, pretty good location. Oh, it's a gas station. Yeah, it is. This, these are images from December of 2018. Uh, it, it was in operation then. It is a good Sun location. Cold. Yeah. Huh. Uh, and let's see here. So. Let me pull up. Just copy and paste that owner's name. All right, let's pull up. Let's try it like that. Twenty-eight records in total is what it pulled up here for us with this Petro of South Florida. So let's see. Liz Pennons. That's the delinquent taxes. And that is from that's 2011. So these are pretty old. Let's see. Order. You know, there's some orders from the Lee County tax collector. So I wonder, is that just order validating tax warrants on tangible properties? Uh, 
order validating tanners will proper. So I wonder if um, this is probably something like a trailer park or something. I mean, trailer, uh, yeah, something that they bought. You know, if they have to validate it, I'll bet it was something like like the property that they added. Let's see, defendant. There's a ton of defendants underneath it. Yeah, there are. Gal. Some mass, mass. Or it might just be a, for the tax lien on the property. Yeah, oops. Oh, crap. I just made the mistake there of. Okay. Now let's go back here and see. Uh, so the first page of them here, none of that stuff looks like like normal lien against property yet that we've seen. No. It's no, this one. Yeah. Except for that might click on that one. Code enforcement case. What I'd obvi obviously be worried about with a a gas station is is the pumps good. Is the the tanks good? Yeah, the underground tanks. For failing to obtain a development order for paving. Yeah, yeah, nineteen two hundred one. Uh, yeah, which this is, is pretty new too. July. Yeah, you know, and that is the site nineteen two hundred one. Yeah, July 2015. So they must, uh, you know, for failing to obtain a development order for paving. They must have paved something without getting a, a work order. Oh, uh, yeah, that probably is. What I think that's what they're, like you, you, you built, you paved pavement without, you know, paying your fee. <laughs> yeah, without paying your fee. And so now you have to pay us. Yeah, that is probably what two hundred eighty-five dollars. Yeah, uh, but that's not really, you know, that that's that's a small lien in terms of uh, the kinds of liens that can be against property. But it is new, so it's one, you know, that's stuck against that property. Yeah. Um, but that's the only lien I think. It's the only one that we see. I mean, if we're going to spend the money, would look a little. Sometimes you can find out a little bit more about the property and looking at some of the other details. Um, but yeah, that's that's the one that stands out within this particular property. And if we determine that was the only lien on the property, then we at least know what we're dealing with. And at that point, you know, two hundred eighty-five dollars plus whatever else they're going to charge, we can figure that out. But that's not that's not the kind of payment or lien that's going to break the deal. It just means we know we're going to have to pay it for it, uh, pay it off once we purchase the property. Uh, look, this is interesting. So a notice of commencement here. It's basically like a work order. You know that they have here and so this was um was one that they issued here you know the improvements were going to be made on a certain real property in accordance with chapter 713 florida statute the following information is provided in the notice of commencement and they have the legal description here you know the property or you know the 19201 carlos and then the general description of improvement is install signage for chevron so this was um the date on on this that it was set for you know, this is recorded on August 16th, 2021, and they were going to install a sign there for Chevron, like a Chevron sign. So there might be new, you know, they might be some kind of new management, you know, with, yeah. with the thing in there, you know, they are. Yeah, there they've got the contractor. Yeah, it's really just just letting them know, you know, they're doing that. So they're, you know, what will probably happen is actually the thing that I hear the deed sale is until next month. The property is going to end up redeeming because it has new owner, you know, and they have probably bought it out and they're changing it over to a Chevron, and they just got the Chevron sign installed, you know, six months ago, and they haven't paid the property taxes up yet. That's probably what. Yeah, happen. Left, of course, if they bought the new property, they would have had to pay the property taxes. Yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, who yeah. knows? Maybe it's under some we'll kind see. of management change. Maybe you can get seller financing or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or maybe they just changed the their yeah. provider. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, of course. But it very well could get redeemed. And there's also strategy in contacting somebody like that and seeing if they're willing to sell before the auction. Let's see if it sold recently. 
no it hasn't sold since 2000 you know for five yeah, you know. 550 in 2000, and you know, 650, you know, in uh, 97. That's probably when it's probably built right around then. You know, in 96. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Well, if if you guys like, you know, the training that we provide, you know, let's go ahead and show them the website. Also, uh, for everyone that attended, you all, guys will also get a. Uh, a one-on-one -on -one strategy session uh, for attending. So we'll go ahead and send you guys out an email uh, where you can go ahead and, and sign up for that strategy session. If you'd like additional training, really our membership program we think is the best value in, in tax cell education. Yeah, undoubtedly. Uh, there is, uh, I don't think anything else that can really compare with it for uh, for the money. You know, it's a combination of, uh, of training resources and tax cell lists. You know, so you can get tax sell lists, you know, links to direct, you know, online auctions. But we also do a live weekly webinar uh, every week. We've got all the, you know, all the recordings for that for uh, going back a couple of years now. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we definitely appreciate you guys uh, that have attended. We'll go ahead and send out the replay to you all. And also that link if, if you'd like to set up a strategy session and talk with one of our coaches yeah yeah figure out if uh if if coaching is something that might work for you or not so yeah. hey thanks for joining us tonight we will uh, see you again soon yeah thanks again